the presidential palace. It's got lots of lights. There's a Panamanian flag out the front. Looks pretty palacey, but that's just a guess. I heard the tour of bus lady say it's somewhere around here, but I'm just guessing. But it's nice, whatever that is. Pretty fancy down here. It was. Oh, so birds can't sit on that corrugated fence? Is that what you're saying? Oh, interesting. Right in the middle of Times Square. Not. Just kidding. Going right there. So we got here, but I think it's closed. Bummer. Is it open? Is it open? Yes. When you're wearing your hat. It's the oldest cafe in Panama City. It's the first place to ever operate Coca-Cola or sell Coca-Cola outside the United States. Ah, and they got lots of stuff. If you get coffee, I'll get Coca-Cola. So we decided on this. Ensalada de fritas. Fruit salad. Even though the rest of their stuff looks good. And it seems to be reasonably priced too. Black coffee's here, it's only a dollar. And coffee with milk's a dollar fifty. Compares to this morning where we spent two dollars and two dollars and twenty-five cents. So and look at that, you can get a flame mignon for nine ninety. These are very good prices. I would love to see what their food tastes like. But we just ate breakfast. Scott's not hungry enough to share another meal, so we'll just do the fruit salad. And we're all hot. Cafe con leche? What's that? Fruit salad? Ensalada de fruta. Ensalada de fruta. And Coca Cola and Scott. Tastes just like Coca Cola. You gotta have some. <laughs> From the guy with the Coca-Cola hat, everybody. We see these on the side of the street a lot. Mm, that's sweet. Sweet? Oh, that's really good. Mm. I hope there's two in there so you can... I don't know what this is. Must be a melon. It's very dark. Oh, it's papaya. It's papaya. Mm. Perfect. I don't know where we are. We're in the middle of like their downtown area right now. There are policemen everywhere with machine guns though. So I guess in a strange way, you feel safe?
Creating a canal across the Isthmus of Panama was first attempted by France. The French started to build the canal in 1881, but failed by 1902. Those 21 years were fraught with problems, ranging from engineering problems to political corruption, resulting in prison sentences and even suicide. Over 100 French politicians were caught taking bribes. The major technical problems the French faced were too much water from pouring rain into the construction sites and causing mudslides, the very hilly soil having to blast through volcanic rock, and illnesses such as yellow fever and malaria. After the French sold their rights to the United States in 1904, the U.S. completed the project and the canal opened on 3 August 1914. The U.S. was aided heavily by the 1897 discovery that mosquitoes transmit malaria. But the main thing that led to the canal was to give up the idea of jigging a trench across the isthmus and instead fill the center of the country with water and form a lake with locks at both ends. From its opening in 1914 until 1979, the Panama Canal was controlled solely by the United States. During this time, resentment built up against the United States, which ultimately led to riots on January 9, 1964. The riot started after a Panamanian flag was torn and students were killed during a conflict between the Canal Zone police and Canal Zone residents. The conflict intensified and U.S. Army units became involved in suppressing the violence after Canal Zone police were overwhelmed. After three days of fighting, 22 Panamanians and four U.S. soldiers were killed. President Jimmy Carter restored peace by forming a treaty with Panama. Ultimately, turning over complete control of the canal to Panama at noon on December 31, 1999. The canal has been operated by the Panamanians ever since, and it is a source of great national pride and economic growth. So we've, we've been seeing tracks in the cities, and we were wondering if they had trolleys before, but it looks like it's actual trains that came through here. So, that explains a lot. Yeah, their mapping system was amazing using those tools. I can't even find my way to the next street without using Google. <laughs> of the Hawaiians. See that? Mm -hmm. Island of the Hawaiians. Oh. Jemima bottle? I know. And I wish I would have kept my bottle. I didn't think it'd be like in a museum one day. But I guess it would be. Oh my god, we're old. That's it, I quit. So you have some buildings like this. Oh. Revised, really nice next to buildings like this that are, you know, falling apart. Very interesting neighborhood. Who's in charge? It's like Hawaii. You can have a really nice house next to one that looks like it's about falling over. From the front, 
What did you say this has to do with? Kind of. Scott was saying this has to do with Panamanian independence. Constantly wet, constantly getting rain. Now look at this building. It's growing trees out of it. Found a nice quiet spot here. So normally here, beeping is going on all the time. It reminds me of New York City. Um, three, like, there's usually three reasons why they're beeping at you. One is the cabs. The cabs want to pick you up. Um, they want to give you a ride, so cab drivers. Number two is somebody's mad at somebody for something, so they're beeping because they're mad. Three is because you're a girl and the guys are beeping at you. So one of those three reasons, somebody's always beeping. Uh, the cab drivers here, super aggressive. So they're constantly trying to get you in their cab, constantly. And they're all independent drivers. They're not part of a big company. They're all independent. They're making money for themselves. So they're super aggressive on that. And so everywhere you go, you're gonna hear beeping. It's not necessarily at you, but it's just, it's happening everywhere you go. Museum of Panamanian History. That's the thing. So we're inside the museum and there's no cost to get in. So. You just have to forfeit your age and your nationality. This is the flag. This is the actual flag from the 9th January incident. Remember she was the one on that sign? Woman president, woohoo! So here in the city, you'll see a lot of French-inspired architecture. Architecture. <laughs> architecture. <laughs> so here in the city, you'll see a lot of French-inspired architecture. And it's because... The French were here. The French were here. Hey Scott, did you make any pots today? Yeah, lots of pots. Welcome to my store. <laughs>
Y está más barato el viaje a, a Colombia que a David. ¿En serio? Hay más mercado, hay más mercado, más gente. Debe de ser. A David está a 150 y a, y a Colombia está a 90. ¿Y hay vuelta? Mm, yo creo. Ya asco. Ya asco. Es de puta crema, la que me da. Ya asco. ¿Quieres sentarte? Ok. Vamos a ver si vale 2 dólares. Ahí está. 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 Ahí It's the cream that makes it good. I'm sure you'll like it too. <laughs> yeah, it's the cream that makes it, but it's good. Yeah. Tastes exactly what you would expect. Grape. With the condensed milk, mm -hmm. pretty much the same as you would get in Hawaii, but um, not the same shape. This is more chunkier and harder. Right. In Hawaii, we are spoiled. The fluffy. Um, with the fluffy, <laughs> straight from heaven kind of snow. <laughs> this is. You know what this tastes like? Well, be careful there. What does it taste like? With the grape and the cream, it kind of tastes like ube. Yeah, it does. It does. It looks like ube too. And it's already melting. I don't want any more. Thank you. Costed him two bucks. You can see inside of that. Let's go look inside. Maybe it's like on a national treasure. It's like an entrance to a secret city. Um, it's not supposed to be open. <laughs> it's a door. It's like a hinge. Once we go down here, we'll have done this entire coast looking out onto the Torchy Road, which is one of the strangest roads I've ever seen. Why is that? Well, they could probably just connect over there. Oh, to over there. For the fact that it goes straight <laughs> out into the ocean yeah, all and there. returns. It just goes around. Maybe it clears up. Um, Traffic. It alleviates traffic in the city. Well, it's putting traffic way over there. Because the streets aren't very big here, so I can oh, imagine. Let's get this. And that is the bridge that connects North and South, North and South America. For a dollar pineapples. Pineapples ever. Yo te digo por cuatro dólares. Oh my gosh, you have no idea. You're gonna get pineapples. I'm gonna get something to make a nice meal with. 
I would love to buy some local produce and cook something at home. But we don't have a kitchen. So yeah, maybe yeah, we'll yeah. have it at the next time. Not yet. Hopefully soon. Oh look, Hawaii. This wasn't open last time. It's still not open. The doors are open, but there's nothing in there. They call it a twin. Oh yeah. What'd you get there? Frosty cone. Does it taste the same? The cone looks different. Yeah, it tastes the same. How about you? I don't know. I got a mix though. The cone looks it's different. Melting already. Yeah, better eat it. to try that. Oh my bow. Okay. So originally I'm ready to do it right now. I was going to get chow mein di puerco but I am going to get this time Kimbap Kimbap No, just Kimbap Kimbap, oh I don't know Okay, so it's pretty cool, they serve you hot tea Scott's not used to having hot tea on a hot day but that's okay, I'll drink it for him They also did not have the Kimbap, sadly so I chose the chow mein di puraco, which is chow mein pork. So that's what I got. I'll give it a try. It's so hot, it makes you feel full. Cool. So you're gonna try it? <laughs> I'll try everything. You should. <laughs> and you're right, it makes you feel so hot that you end up feeling cool. This is a small cloak and it's a giant. You can have. So you're as much as you like. Well, try it. That's what I want to know. Little tiny sausage. Mm -hmm. Giant chickens. So mm -hmm. mm -hmm. This is not great chicken. Okay. <laughs> what does it taste like? It's kind of like a... A little bit like a buffalo wild wing. It's got that sauce, that vinegary that I don't really like. Mm -hmm. So I don't know where they got their idea from. So the only thing that makes it crunchy is the sesame seeds on it, but the rest of it's all like soft. So no go for you. No go. Mm. This is mine. What's that say? Coca Cola. Yeah. With out sugar. <laughs> so you can get my lime. Yeah, you're supposed to get lime. Anyway. So it's a Diet Coke, I think. Mine's original. All right. This place is cool. Be here all night. <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> what is that look? <laughs> we came to the wrong place. <laughs> for Korean food. <laughs> it's not bad. It's very um, salty to me. Would I come back for this? Probably not. But it's not horrible. But this is too salty for me. So today we're eating at La Fischeria. 
and we ordered a lobster pasta. It looks beautiful. Uh, we got a couple of coffees. And the menu was really good. It was quite, you know, it was kind of on the pricey side. Ceviche was like $15 and I think this is $30. So we'll probably not make it a common thing coming here, but I hope hope the food is at least good. Yeah. Give it to me. I'm not used to having lobster in a, like a red pasta sauce. So I don't really like it that much. Okay. But I'm sure it's good if you like that kind of food. Alright. Alright. So after we're eating this, we talked about it. This is not our favorite. Normally we're used to lobster with a creamy sauce and not necessarily a red sauce. That doesn't make it bad, but what I've noticed is, to me these aren't exactly lobsters. They're more like what we call them white slipper lobsters. So it seems like the cheaper, smaller lobster, it doesn't have a great flavor to it. Um, well, that's a garlic. For the price, for the price I wouldn't come here again. But the texture of the noodles and everything, it's good. It's good if you like the like food and you don't mind paying the price for it. But I wouldn't. I would. You know, I, didn't, I don't like the flavor of the lobster. Um, I prefer white sauces over red. With seafood, yeah. yeah. With seafood, yeah, definitely. So this is where we decided to eat. And Scott wants to get this lobster special. I don't know if you can see that good. And two for one mojitos. I got a mango, and Scott got a passion fruit. Can't pass up a deal. He can never pass up a deal. And we're also gonna get this giant box. You wanna show it to me? Hopefully here it, it looks as good in the picture as it does on there. We'll just get the giant one to fit it. Server with one side. You can either have French fries or green salad or rice and potato. Fries. You're breaking my heart. I think one of these guys are going to be dinner. And I'm really sad right now. So I'm really happy because he said they don't, Scott tried to get the lobster over there. Yeah, the guy said, no, we don't have lobster. So I said, I pointed like they're right there. And he says, no, those are the mascots and we can't eat them. Yeah. So Sandy's Save probably the life happy. today, save the life. <laughs> can't eat them. Okay. So, oh. I just got heartbroken again because the guy <laughs> said he pointed to the thing and said, He's gonna kill one for Scott. How do you feel about yourself? Yeah, he actually went. <laughs> so the mascots, they're getting old probably, you know. It's time to rotate in some new mascots. <laughs> oh god. Uh, anyway, he has a passion fruit. Mojito. And here's my mango. How does yours taste? It tastes good. It's good. It's got all kinds of like greens in there too, like mint. Leaves. It's supposed to. It's a mojito. Mm, Let's try mine. Look, he's reaching in there. Did you get it already? Not yet. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen.
doesn't have claws. <laughs> <laughs> you cry. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're mean. He's crashed. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can't let his death be in vain. Let's go. That's right. That's a good attitude. Here, let's taste together. It looks good. gonna do it. We're gonna eat Peruvian Japanese cuisine. Salmon, shrimp, avocado, quinoa, and passion fruit sauce. All this one is your standard salmon, avocado, kanikama, ponzu. Oh, what to do? <laughs> uh, this is a chives. Okay, let me stick to... No, I'm gonna go out and something new. I'm gonna get this. Okay. And if it's good, now we'll come back for this. Inka maki. Yeah. Whoa. Oh, Salmon no. ceviche. Feast your eyes on that. That looks amazing. There's some kind of puree in there too. I'm I hope it's as good as it looks. This is too good. Look at all that. Spices and some kind of puree. Ooh, and I'm gonna eat this flour. Can I steal this flour from you? Yeah, you can eat it. You should mix it with something. How are you gonna know what the flour is? <laughs> well, you start complaining. Wow. You should eat one petal alone. So you know what the flower tastes like. It's terrible you shouldn't have any. What? It's terrible you shouldn't have any. I'll just take this whole. Oh, you're willing to sacrifice like that for me. I really am. Mm. <laughs> It's so good. <laughs> Did you have the flour yet? Yeah, yeah. Mm. You want a piece of flour? Uh, if you save me one petal, it'll be nice. That was really hard to do. Thank you. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> what did it taste like? It tastes like the mix between Peruvian ceviche that we had, the tiger's leche. It's got these little pieces of toasted corn, like that other one did, do you remember? Yeah. And it's got the red onion. It's, it tastes like a salmon ceviche. It's very good. So you got some of that pumpkin? Yeah. Right? Okay, go. really good. 
It reminds me of the awesome um, pâtés and little um, appetizers we would have when we were in uh, Caver Hill. Caver Hill. Mm. In Canada. Oh, like a lot of really good flavors. Really awesome. Dig in, huh? Now let's dig in. It's a little smaller than I hoped. This time I got petals. Yeah. That is way different than I expected it to be. Yeah. <laughs> In what way? Mm. It's unique. But I don't think the passion fruit goes well with the sushi. <laughs> no. Mm -mm. It's not bad. It's just um, unexpected. Unexpected. <laughs> that ponzu one is probably going to be really good though. Well, another day. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Here's my sake ponzu. Sake means salmon. It's very good. The ponzu sauce goes well with the salmon, as you would expect. It's a great dish. Oh, that egg looks perfect, though. Yeah. There you go. Mm -mm -mm. Mm, this, this feels like the heavy noodles that we had in that kit, you know, that you've got. Mm -hmm. so, whatever, not vegetarian noodles or something. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good. Yeah. It does remind me of those noodles. They're good though. You should try. How's it brought though? The broth is good. Of course, it's not the best we had. Oh, okay. And it's different. It's their own flair, I think. So is it's it not, good different? It's okay different. Mm. So what I would say is this is so different from any of the other ramens we've ever had is that it's almost its own dish. It's different enough to be a whole different thing. And in that regard, I like it, and I wouldn't get it again. Um, everything goes well together, and there's lots of different flavors. There's sweet, and there's tangy, there's salty. And yeah, their the meat. meat is like a bacon. It's really good, but and it's it was probably cooked in soy sauce or something. Yeah. It's got a little crisp on it. The egg is perfect. The noodles are good consistency. Yeah. And the mush mushrooms have a, like a pop, like a tangy pop to it. And the breath, the broth has a depth of flavor in it. Yes. Yeah, so. so this is good, really good. Yeah, it was better than mine. Um, of course, I'm gonna eat all of mine, but um, I would not order this again. I would probably go with the salmon ponzu next time, and I think that would be excellent. Oh, there's flowers on it. How are you ever gonna eat it? It's I too think it's pretty. Be so gross. <laughs> what are you gonna try it to? <laughs> All right, instead of lunch, and getting kind of this, which is fried ice cream, which I always try to get in the United States. But in the United States, most places don't really fry their fried ice cream anymore. They just like roll in oatmeal or something, whatever they can do to make it easier, and maybe even less of a liability for the workers. But they're not really frying it anymore. So we'll see what this is. I'm hoping it's really fried. Mmm, no. You can tell because it's not hot on the outside or crispy. But it does taste good. Their ice cream is really good here. It was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> 
That good. Look at that smile. That would have been good. <laughs>